Hey guys, Mark here again. Hey, I thought I'd do a video talking about um, my power requirements or my power journey, so to speak, with my track and also maybe show you how much current different ohm motors, different ohm cars draw. Uh, we could use my newer uh, 10 amp supply which has an amp meter on it and we can take a look at the current draw on each car we'll do a few laps but um basically you know i started out with when i bought my track it just had this single voltage wall pack which this only puts out 0.7 amps and my track came with the super g plus cars back when i originally bought my super international set I also bought the four-way split set. So I actually had four of these wall packs for the the four, two four-lane tracks. Um, and I was just setting up the track on the floor and in my living room from time to time and just all stock. You know, and I was just running the, the Super G Plus cars and my older Magna Traction cars. And it was fine. Um, you know, then I started running some lower ohm armature cars and just started looking into power in general and I actually came across a series of videos that uh, Terry Flynn did from Hardin Creek um, gave me the idea to, to upgrade to this universal I guess this is like a laptop power supply this is actually a 3 amp uh, 24 volt variable supply um but he has a series of three videos that you can check out and yeah, he did them like seven years ago i think but several years ago i i stumbled upon his videos they're, they're good videos you should check them out but i'm going to kind of condense what he does in three videos into this one video um so i went ahead and cut the the connection off of my wall wall plug and i soldered them on and heat shrinked them to this uh, three amp supply and you know basically went from 0.7 amps which is which is really only like 0.35 amps per lane once you split it amongst the two lanes so with three amp supply i was getting an amp and a half to each lane and it was nice you, you didn't have those those power surges to the you know like when a car de-slots the other car would start going much faster because if you're running a, a Mega G car, that thing draws almost half an amp. So running two of them, you really need an amp to, or more to, to run two cars. And these wall plugs just really, um, even the Super G Plus car, that's also a six ohm armature. So really barely enough current to run two Super G Plus cars from this, this wall plug. Um, and yeah, so for a while I was running this setup. Then I went ahead and got the permanent track layout on the table here. And I was still using these two supplies for a while with the uh, with the stock terminal track. I, I did end up getting the bigger 10 amp supply, but I was still using the terminal track. So I went ahead and wired uh, two, um, two more of the stock plug that I cut off of yet two of my other wall packs and was running that that up to the uh, the terminal track you know then I went ahead and I got the uh, the dedicated power to each lane which I now have wired into the uh, the newer supply and this supply on Amazon I think was about 60 bucks so the 30 volt 10 amp it was smaller than I thought. It's not very big. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, so yeah, I figured we could run some laps. Maybe you know we could run the the wizard car. That's a this is a Viper V Spec six ohm Mega G Plus a T Jet. This is a Magna Traction. And this is a production modified Viper with a three ohm armature. Figured we can uh, we can take some laps and and look at the the current draw for each car. So 
go ahead and pause and we'll be right back. All right, I got the camera set up looking at the uh, meter on the supply and we'll run some laps. Hope you guys can still hear me okay. Let's go ahead and start out with a, um, do a, a Mega G Plus car. So you can see the Mega G Plus car, it doesn't really draw a lot of current. These canned motors in these cars are pretty high ohm. I think they're upwards of almost 20 ohms. I'm not 100% sure what the resistance is on these motors, to be honest with you, but they're pretty high, and that's why the newer sets come with those 120 ohm controllers. Um, also, if you look at a T-Jet, which is a pretty high ohm, very similar to the resistance of a, a Mega G+, Plus, um, it also only pulls barely 0.2 amps so you'd be fine running a stock wall plug with with those cars um we'll take a look at a magnet traction car this is a 12 ohm standard uh, red wire magnet traction car As you can see it draws a little bit more current, 0.3 amps, which we're starting to get a little bit lower resistance on the armature now, but still would probably work fine with the standard uh, standard wall plug. Uh, we could take a look at, this is a mean green uh, 6 ohm armature, magnet traction car. So it's drawing a little bit more current, it's getting up close to uh, half an amp. So, now we can take a look at the Wizard Storm car. This is also stock, uh, I'm assuming it's a 6 ohm armature. See that's that's getting up there. That's that's pushing the limits. 0.7 amps of, of the stock wall plug. If you try to run two of those cars, and you uh, you'd be feeling it if you're using a, a 0.7 amp wall plug. Um, let's take a look at the V spec. Is, is similar, like the V spec. 0.6 amps. production modify which is a 3 ohm armature you can see that that's hitting over an amp so you really wouldn't want to run that car or anything with lower than you know you get even lower uh, than 3 ohm armatures you definitely need you, you, you want to get you're going to want to have closer to two amps per lane if you can um but yeah that's uh that's a quick little video on the the different car ohm armatures and you can see how much current they draw basically the the lower you get in the resistance the uh the more current the the motor is going to draw so that's it Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video, maybe found it a little, little informative, and let me know what you think. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.